Hi, peeps. So welcome to the IGV audit consultancy space because we know that uh, some of us have certain concern towards the IGV audit regarding on summer closings. So this is mainly the purpose and also the objective of holding this uh, of holding the space tonight. Yeah. So later on, throughout the uh, throughout the time, we'll be addressing the question that raised by some of us. Then, uh, so that to provide a more clear way forward and addressing the concern that you're having. Yeah, so if let's say your question is not being put in the slide and you or you suddenly pop up certain idea or question, please feel free to leave in the chat box so that after we addressing um, one round, then we can go through another way of the question that you want to propose. Okay, yep, so I'm sharing the screen with you. Um, if you guys are clear and you can see the slides, you can give me a wave. Yeah, just a quick sign. Okay, thank you. So now uh, we'll start the IGV audit consultancy space share away. So we will start with IGV first. So I'll pass the time to Amanda. Okay, cool. So basically, uh, in this consultancy space today, we'll, we'll break it down into three functions, IGV, PD, IGV, and also FL, mainly remaining on, around these three functions only. So if we are going function by function the questions will only revolving around the function itself so let's say if you have any questions regarding like finance or all these things it will be answered in uh fl side or either pdigv side okay cool so moving on to igv uh uh part so far i have received questions regarding uh, a few sections here first thing first is that for example let's say if i need to do summer replanning for project goal should we include goal that consists of brief eps if our project is running both ep and lv so regarding summer goal replanning right there is two things that you need to have first goal is your ep goal second goal is your lv goal so let's say if you're running ep and lv at the same time then you need to have two goals and then something to take note is that you need to include existing approvals as well in your ex in your current goal because those approvals will serve as actual uh, for the goals that you have you are going to set okay and then let's say if you are going to have any EPs that is going to be shifted due to break approval then that actual will not be counted uh, within that goal itself then it will be your winter uh, issues okay so that is for summer goal replanning and then moving on to local volunteer part, I have received question regarding how to sell local volunteer to other LC, local volunteer value proposition, local volunteer standards and all these things. So later on, I will send you this booklet. Uh, it's, it, it's in this picture. So you just need to click in that picture and then it will link you to a local volunteer OGV customization booklet. So even though it's an OGV booklet, but at the same time, you can also refer to a lot of uh, local volunteer uh, framework, local volunteer of how you run it and all these things in that booklet itself. So regarding those questions that you have mentioned, uh, local volunteer, how to sell it, value propositions, and all these things. You can find it in the booklet itself. But something that I'm going to highlight here is that transportation and value delivery are non-negotiables under LV standards. So currently, we are also working on LV standards, but it will not be released to you that soon because uh, we are still finalizing all this SOP before we move on to standards itself. But it's just a heads up that transportation and value delivery has to be covered under your lo local volunteer standards. Okay, but then for accommodation-wise, uh, it shall be provided but not covered means that uh, you need to help uh, the local volunteer find accommodation if they are not staying in the particular area and they require uh, accommodation so that one you need further alignment with OGV so let's say if you have situations where uh, you you cannot uh, find accommodation or this thing then you need to make it clear whether you want to receive cross LC uh, local volunteers or not okay that is the things that you need to have further alignment with OGV later on cool so moving on, uh, expa related uh, questions. Should we still edit expa details when we only run LV, or should we still edit expa uh, after I do I done my project replanning? Okay, for example, I break it down into two situations. One is you run summer realization with EPs. Second one is you run summer realization without EPs. So without EP means maybe you are running local volunteer, or maybe you are not running anything in summer. So in this situation, with EP realization you need to adjust your project activity and schedule accordingly because for example maybe you have you will face issue where you cannot run projects uh, workshops right in the school or you need to do something extra then you need to adjust your project activity and schedule then second thing after done all those things you need to amend your project details on expa only if you are running ep then you need to amend project details on expa let's say if you are running realization without eps only local volunteers then you just need to adjust your project activities and schedule accordingly it's the same thing but the difference is that you do not need to amend anything on expa because we will close 
uh, your opportunity on XPA because you no longer require XPA to help you find EPs, right? So you don't need to do anything to XPA. Okay, yes. So um, that is those situations with IGV. And then uh, moving on, I'll pass it to Travis for PD IGV. Okay, hi everyone. Yeah, so for the following part, we'll be addressing the question that raised in PDIGV side. Yep, so for question number one that we receive is that, um, so due to current circumstances, there is some certainties with how to proceed with the new potential OPs. So will there be another round of audit for winter project open? Yeah, so if we know about that, you uh, for the sales of OP, we are doing one peak ahead. So definitely, uh, for NCL project, our audit timeline will be a little bit different with the PBOX project as well. So that's why we'll have another round um, of audit for NCL project for winter open. So the rough timeline will be shown below. So let's say if your project realization period for the winter project is before December, let's say it's on uh, September to November, then your audit timeline for the winter open should be in this round, which means from late late March to early April. So if let's say your winter project realization period is from December to next year March, let's say, then your audit timeline should be in next round. So estimated, it will be open from May to June. Yeah, so this is the roughly idea. And then second of all, for OP pricing model, is that we are only allowed to use the 300 ringgit OP fee package if let's say the OP are stable and can afford 500 ringgit for OP fee package. Yeah, so the answer is yes. So in OP pricing model, we have two pricing levels. So it's about 300 ringgit, that one, and also 500 ringgit. So this one is a pilot model of pricing. Yeah, so the minimum of the OP pricing level is set to be 300 ringgit as legislated in our campaign uh, since MC1819. Um, in order to achieve NCL project sustainability, reduce EP financial burden, and also align with the national management as well. Yeah, so for 500 OP fee, definitely it can be executed, and also it is welcome from, um, it, it is welcome for our partner. Yeah, so why we are one, why why we now change the uh, pricing model since MC 1819 because we realized that a lot of NCL project we are not able to sustain ourselves. We are not even um, achieving the break even goal. It means that we are doing the project with loss, which is doesn't make sense because um, Isaac we are not the uh, Isaac we are not the solely charity yeah so when we are providing a voluntary service to external we also need some resources and support for our, ourselves to develop our project so that it can improve and evolve in the future to widen our impact yeah and uh, so for if let's say I, I also know that regarding on the OP pricing model some of the LC you may be concerning about local volunteer yeah so we, even though we are changing to local volunteer as a replacement of EP we would not change our pricing model as well yeah so I think this is I uh, have a oh so I think right for this part there are a few elements that we can consider first of all is that um, the value proposition of our um, NCL project is that having a high portion of internationalism. So according to the partner sensing that uh, my LCVP, my network, and also uh, some of the director from NCL they've been doing, um, we realized that for the internationalism so far, it's not uh, taking a majority of the value proposition that the partner is looking for. Instead, they are looking for the expertise and also different way of doing or running the NGO um, internally. So this would be our edge in showcasing um, our EP's quality and also local volunteers' quality. So this in element doesn't only uh, doesn't alter or differ throughout the nationality. So that's why majorly the rest of the surface and also uh, element are the same, expect, except from the nationality. So that's why for the pricing we will not change. So you can see um, regarding on the OP pricing model, normal pricing is that our OP fee will be three hundred, so that we will charge our EP for two hundred. And then for the project S, which is this pilot model, is that we solely charge the opportunity provider for 500 ringgit, and then EP will be zero. So you will see that uh, if we are executing the pilot model, which is our ideal state, definitely would reduce our EP financial burden and attract more and more EP to apply for our NCL project as well. Yep. Yeah, so for uh, local volunteer, for EP fee, 
um, it will still charge them 200. Yeah, it's the same when uh, we are receiving international volunteer. So they will be also paying 200 as well in order to um, balance the sustainability of our LC. Yeah, and I think uh, we also need to realize that in ISM Malaysia, certain LC, we are already suffering from cash flow problem and also the profit, uh, profitability as well. So I think uh, we also need to realize that uh, when we are executing the project, we have to um, minimum attain the break-even goal so that we can at least sustain ourselves for a certain month. Especially now, in current situation, a lot of campus is spending activity or put it as suspension, which means that we cannot do the outgoing side of the exchange. Then the mainstream of revenue is um, currently suspended. Yeah, it would create a lot of huge burden if we are still um, not considering profitability and also sustainability for our own project. So that's why we will still charge our EP for 200 ringgit. Yep. So question three uh, is 300 OP fee package that the OP need to provide accommodation and also meals. Yeah, so the answer is 50% of yes and no. So the yes part lies on the opportunity provider will need to provide accommodation for EPs, which is status in compendium as well. The part of no is that the meal is not covered. And the last question, since some partner, uh, partner deliver, I think it's deliverable, will be replanned or postponed. So should we include the latest MOU into the project replan audit and also open audit? So I think we would need to re um, resign the MOU with partner for the changes in deliverable. For those that significantly bringing changes, let's say time change or your whole project content is changed or the scale is changed. Yeah, or your number of EP and LV will be changed like that. So this will be requiring the synergy with finance in order to ensure we are clearly delivered uh, with all our deliverable with a written documentation to avoid further conflict if the partner um, seek for that. Yeah, okay. Then it will be the part of PDIGV Then I will pass the time to Aang for finance and legality. Hi everyone. So uh yeah, let's go into the finance and legality question. So uh first part uh we get is that uh transportation P or uh, for LC is asking if I say usually their transportation fee is under EP or actually LV own expenses. Is it possible for us to actually localize the whole LV pricing? I assume that you wanted to reduce your LV pricing, but uh main thing is that according to National Compendium, uh the transportation and accommodation are covered uh, should be covered by the LC as it's already stated in our uh pricing model for IG and then if you still remember there is a region A, B and C, D yeah so for that it's already uh, it's supposed to be covered uh, all the transportation and all the accommodation for LC even though it's not uh, under the 16 standard and then also according to the given LV uh, pricing model the transportation is included so that's why it should be uh, covered and then uh, in terms of localizing LV pricing recommended is to follow the uh, downscale pricing because that's also uh, much easier for OG side in terms of selling yeah, just think in a way that if let's say you are selling your OG, but yet every of the uh, pricing is different, then it will be very hard for that as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first one. And then for second one is that, uh, is LC allowed to charge a convention fee from LV? Uh, yes, LC should charge a convention fee from the LV because it's not covered under the uh, the whole LV pricing. All right, so it's really up to the LCC uh, decision to actually choose that uh, you want to actually focus on same university student, which you have the chances of not, no need to actually cover a commission and also no need to provide a commission because they already have the uh, hostel there. Or if let's say you choose to focus on your cross LC or exchange LV, which you're going to uh, secure a commission for them. All right. So uh, main thing for each of the LC to take note is they're really aware on your cash flow and the ability for you to host uh, these people. Because the thing is that most of the accommodation, it needs a requirement of like, uh, for example, four, four people a package or something like that. So if let's say you do not have enough people, then how are you able to cover all these expenses? So that part is really for finance to look into that uh, more detailly and you should uh, have the decision either you want to focus on uh, um, same uh, campus or you want to have more cross campus uh, exchange uh, for your LV. Okay.
Okay, so moving forward is that uh, if let's say a uh, volunteer is using their own transportation, assuming uh, Malaysian they have their own car and everything, if uh, will LC still need to charge them full LV pricing? Yes, uh, the answer is yes, because that it will be much easier for you to actually sell your OG. At the same time, uh, you should actually charge them fully and then you reimburse to the local volunteer according to uh, how much they spend on the transportation. Yeah, so basically if I say they go one kilometer, then according to your uh, uh, internal financial policy, how much you should actually uh, reimburse to them, all right? Yeah, so same with the jury pricing, the LV pricing already set the maximum amount from the national side. Uh, you can review, uh, reduce it actually if you want, but uh, really not recommended in current situation. All right. So also same thing is that take into consideration for OG is promoting same price will be much easier for them. And I take into consideration if let's say you are doing uh maybe it's very low amount but you're still doing a certain cross LC exchange LV, same pricing will actually uh, make sure the whole operation go more smoothly because you no need to uh, calculate a lot of differences in that. All right. And then uh we have uh also question regarding our uh, possibility to actually sell LV in package. So uh, the recommender is no because the LV pricing is actually quite low and if let's say you are still selling in package, high chance that you're going to reduce much lower um, and then in current period of time, it's very hard for you to cover all your IG project expenses. So I uh, recommend really not to do that. All right. So or uh, and so taking into consideration that a lot of entity actually do a lot of package or promotion and these are actually causing a lot of deficit in revenue. Yeah. And even though you can take it as a promotion strategy to do for your, like such as your OG side, but based on current situation, we really not recommend to actually push for any reduction. Yeah. Okay. So moving forward is that uh, possibility of our uh, OP fee actually up uh, OP fee pricing reduction. So uh, the answer is no, we are not reducing the OP fee pricing because it's actually set according to distribution model. And that's the thing that you can actually look into the IG pricing uh. The, the one that we launched in the uh, slide there and it's just based on the value proposition it's not uh it's not we are using the fee to cover a conversion uh all this logistic and this i think is supposed to be covered by o, uh, op as well all right so uh and then uh so the thing is that uh one of the main consequences is that if let's say we are reducing op fee according to weeks and then in the future if let's say we want to go back to six weeks when we are uh, going to continue doing our GV, it will be very hard for us to go back because maybe your OP wanted to stay with local volunteer and wanted to continue with four weeks because the pricing is actually much uh, lower. Then it will actually jeopardize our upcoming winter uh, operation as well. So that's why we are not uh, really wanted to uh, reduce the OP fee pricing at this moment. Okay. And then moving forward is that uh, alignment of our LV expenses with our GV expenses. Um, I think main thing is that I wanted to get more clarification, but this is based on my personal understanding. All right. So when we actually setting the LV prices, actually we take the average expenses of our IG, excluding those our Apple pickup as given by each of the LCVPFL. All right. So in uh, GV six week, if as usually is that our first week is our uh, on um. IG onboarding and then second to fifth week is actually more towards the uh, project activity and last week you will have the LC event and so on. So usually it's that the transportation will be happening from uh, second to fifth week when you are having all those uh, project activity. So that's why taking into those considerations, uh, we are not actually uh, changing any differences. That means we based on that, uh, whatever is set there and then we take the average and then we come up with the whole LV pricing. So yeah, so that's why in terms of the LV pricing, we are not... Um, you it's the same thing that how much you're gonna spend for LV is the same thing that how much you're gonna send in uh, GV as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's all from FL side. I pass back the floor to yeah, Amanda. So now we'll open extra space for QA. So regarding the things that we have mentioned just now, if you have any questions, you can just uh type it down or you can open your mic, then we will attend to your questions. Uh, anyone has any questions? Yeah, I think we can give you guys some time to digest. Yeah, but if let's say you don't have any questions so far in mind, you can give us a wave so that we know about it. Yeah. Yes, 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 you will get it. Don't worry, on Wei Chiang. What? Slides, I'll put, we will send it to you later. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I think also something to add on uh, regarding uh, PM peeps, those are attending this uh, consultancy space, even though we don't have any uh, 
things regarding PM, but I think you play a very, very important role in your LC itself because now with a lot of changes on JD, a lot of changes on KPI and all these things, uh, that is where you need to guard all this picture regarding what is happening with IGV, PD, IGV and FL so you know how to uh, assist your uh, functional peeps as well along the process of the change management. So all these changes needs to, need, you need to be aware of because it requires human resources, it requires people to, to, to be ordered to uh, make all these things happen. Yeah, so that is why we involve VPM in this space. If you have any questions, just type it down. Yeah, for NCR, right, for the minimum of seven uh, EPs, for us, actually, this is a benchmark on how we can do it in the most cost-effective and also um, the way that maximize our effort. Yeah, but then we don't have a legit, really, uh, registered or legislated number on, you know, on NCR project, how many EPs that we have to receive. Yeah, so it is like a benchmark for you to take reference. Yeah, but of course you can negotiate more with the partner if they are willing to expand their uh, circle of influence as well. Yep. Um, but I think also a little bit to add on from IGV side because there is going to be a lot of changes on EPs, uh, exchanges, movement and all these things, right? So to be honest, we are also trying to look into reducing the minimum benchmark. That is why... Uh, we might not launch this as of now, but something to, for you to heads up is that minimally you need at least four volunteers for you to run a project. Uh, NCR is an exclu uh, excluding criteria here because you have a different negotiation with your OP, right? But for PBOX or uh, national projects, you need to have minimum four volunteers, be it EPs or be it local volunteers. So if you're only running local volunteers, then you need like a minimum four local volunteers but if you are mixing of local volunteers and EP then you only need like two EP two local volunteer or three EP one local volunteer for example yeah but for NCI it, it depends on uh, the MOU that you have signed with your OP and also alignment with PD IGV on uh, minimum numbers Uh, so for, let's say if some partner cannot pay due to no income currently, can I know what is the way forward? Yeah, so I think this is a very good question because now I think the economy of some certain industry are starting to decline. Yeah, a lot of company, they are starting the uh, employee termination. So the cash flow of the company internally may have some issue. So we would suggest you, we can postpone or delay the payment yet you need to set a time frame with your partner so at least to understand uh for, by when the money will come in yeah i understand that um we need to show consideration and also understanding towards partner definitely we will but then from our side it will be better for us to know about the time frame so that we can synergize with finance um to understand when the cash will come in to solve our lc um financially uh, our cash flow as well especially for pd pips i want you to know about that a lot of the time we have a lot of sales on, right? But then sales one is an accrual basis. It means that um, the sales is recognized. Um, uh, the, so it means that the MOU sign, the amount of the money that we raise is kind of recognized that it means it's supposed to come. Let's say I sign MOU on March. So the revenue is supposed to come on March. So this is our accrual basis. But then when we synergize with finance, we need to change a little bit of the perspective into cash basis. It means that Yes, I signed an MOU on March, but then the cash doesn't come in in March directly. So when will it come in? Yeah, so it's same uh, concept when we applying to the NCR OPP as well. Even though we signed the MOU with partner, we need to clearly understand when the cash will directly come into our um, account. It will be easier for us to forecast and plan for the um, uh, our LC sustainability in long term. Uh, do you have any more questions? Yeah, so um, I think, right, um, lastly, for that question, just to add on, so the last, so for the decision made, right, whether you want to accept that OP, it was solely based on your LC financial situation. Yeah, so that's very important. Mm. 
I think also from uh, IGV perspective, every everyone in this uh, space itself, IGV, PD, IGV, or FL or PM, you need to have alignments whenever you are making any decision. For example, let's say if you are delaying your realization, right, you need to at least uh, synergy with PD, IGV to know, okay, let's say if you already signed an MOU, how do you need to deal with partners? And then in FL perspective, how let's say if you delay your realization or delay any uh, any operations, right, how is it going to affect your LC sustainability, your project sustainability, and all these things. So uh, when you are going to make any decisions, don't only stand in one perspective, but remember synergy needs to happen within all the functions. Okay, so I get this uh, question from, I think, Yuta, as our LC don't have much reserve, can we limit the EP or uh, either is in GV or LV or transportation by giving a fixed amount for a transportation allowance? Um, I think in that sense, um, yes, you can, but I will, I will make sure, uh, I think one thing you make, to make sure is that really go into the DMF to double check all the project um, transportation to ensure that your LV able to cover all these things. That means that in terms of the total uh, amount that you have should be able to cover all these things and you do know that only which part of the transportation you will cover. Because for example, a lot of time why it's uh, exceed the budget is because it wasn't calculated uh, clearly on each of the transportation. So as long as you calculated clearly all of the things, then it should be more clear towards the either it's the EP or the L, uh, LV that side. Cool. And then regarding the phone question, uh, yes, it is not mentioned in the email, but it is mentioned in the booklet attached in the email. So just check the booklet. Uh, you will find the timeline for the audit submission. So basically, to make it easier for you, audit submission has to be 1st April 11.59 p.m. GMT plus 8. And then uh, uh, answering to Sunny's question. Yep. So for this part, right, basically it's more on the pricing model and also the uh, project content. Yep. So um, yes, our NCL project would be limited to four weeks. But then more importantly, I think when we are doing sales or running NCR, um, it's very important for us to know about that. What we are doing now is this really helping the NGO. So now, yes, definitely we shorten four weeks. But then if you look into another perspective is that the schedule of the local volunteer or maybe EP um, is more squeezed into a, a shorter period. So supposedly what this volunteer would, a, would be able to contribute in a shorter period of time should be more centralized and more concentrated. So I would suggest you when you um, negotiate or when you communicate with your partner, do let them know that what they are looking for for the local volunteer. Then you may involve them in planning out the project schedule and also the content for the local volunteer and for the NGO themselves so that they can really um, uh, seek one volunteer from our side that can really address their root cause and also the, the concern they have been long holding to. Yeah, so I think for this part, um, even though our time period is shortened, but then our value proposition can be amplified in that way. Uh, and then regarding polling questions, uh, okay, even though it's off topic, okay, uh, yeah. So for this OGV, they haven't downscaled the manual expire yet, uh, but it will be downscaled within uh, as soon as they can, because basically they are still pending for IGV to filter all those local volunteer projects so that they they can launch the thing together. So just ask your LCVP OGV to get back to MCVP OGV or MC Director OGV respectively, okay? Yeah. And then uh, regarding uh, Guofeng's questions again. LV project, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you might not know this, but I actually read down scale to IGV peeps. So if you are running GV projects with EPs, it has to be six weeks full. But if you are running projects with LV only, then you can choose either you want to run four weeks or six weeks. All this information you can find in the LV booklet later on when we down scale to you. And basically, let's say if you are running EPs and LV together, then your project has to be six weeks. But your LV can choose whether they want to realize four weeks or realize six weeks. Okay, yeah, hope that is clear for you. Okay, so um, receiving question from Crystal. So if let's say we are not running all project in this summer, so is it suggested to promote ourselves only those uh, summer project that opening? 
uh, or do we promote winter project also? So for uh, from our side, definitely, if let's say in summer, we just run speak up and COP, then the project that we are selling to our summer partner, definitely, it just only uh, speak up and COP, which is the only project that will be opening in this summer. Of course, those project are example. Yeah, because um, I think this is from an ethical perspective is that you tell the partner that this money raised is to contributing to this project. But if you are not going to run in summer, then the partner may consider that they feel trapped or not uh, being properly treated in terms of ethical treatment. Yeah, so I would suggest you, uh, uh, not suggest, sorry, it's 100% that if you are selling the uh, project to your summer partner, then we just only choose those uh, running in the summertime. And if you wish to, um, let's say, do winter project promotion, it can still be. Yeah, but then just to ensure, um, again, like if let's say the partner sponsor you for this winter, how would be on also when the cash will come in? Is it from the reimbursement uh, format or they will directly cash in to your account so that our LC can sustain until December? This is the uh, non-negotiable bottom line. Yep. Okay. Uh, also, I have just sent you a presentation slide. So basically, that is the LV booklet that I have mentioned in the uh, pre uh, sessions earlier. Uh, if your questions are not addressed in the booklet, then you may raise your questions here. Okay. But let's say if some of your questions are actually... Uh, can be found in the booklet then you just found your answer in the booklet okay basically minimum or maximum working hours how many weeks of uh working working weeks and all these things you can find in the booklet so attending to joanna's question if we run with both lv and ep is there any changes for project activity or we can just have lv do activity with the ep so uh like i mentioned uh last time we are treating lv like an ep because they are they are not either because they are our volunteers they are our customers Okay, so supposingly your project activity should run together with both your LV and EPs if you are doing two together. Then let's say if you are having any differences of working hours, working timeline, then that is what we mean by project activities replanning that you that needs to happen in your in your project itself. Because for example, maybe your local volunteer will have lesser working hours and some of the activities maybe they will not be joining because of the differences of working hours then you need to set it very clear what is your bottom lines what it, what are the activities that your lv and your ep has to do together and what are the things that your lv can exclude from that project activities depending on your working hours and changes so but let's say if you want to standardize it everything to be the same six week then you can actually negotiate with the ep or you can actually align with ogv on all these criteria yeah, so basically for IGV side, I have already filtered out all these projects that is running local volunteer. I have also created a search tool uh, to be sent to OGV side. So uh, I will do further alignment with all the LCVP IGV again, in case if you have any specific requirements for local volunteers or uh, any related selling points in your project and all these things, feel free to put it in so that at least OGV know, okay, this is the non-negotiable uh, things that your local volunteer has to fulfill. Yeah, so that is the things that you need to align and replan again in your project activities. Any more question? Uh, maybe we can give you guys five more minutes. Yep, so if you have any question, then you can feel free to drop in the chat box. Yep. If you don't have so far, you can give us a wave so that to let us know that um yeah, whether you are thinking or not. Um I would suggest you all to look back to the uh, criteria and if you have any more specific questions regarding the audit criteria, feel free to ask us again. Unless uh you really couldn't think then you can approach us again because uh, this is the purpose of the consultancy space is for you to clarify the criteria if you are not clear with the criteria itself. But yeah, you are asking a little bit uh, too much on LV. But let's say uh, if you are clear on the criteria, then you can just put the way forward. But if you are not clear, please make sure that you go through the criteria again and then have the clarifications here.
Okay, so since we don't have, we don't see much question incoming, yeah. So maybe we'll just narrow the time to two minutes, yeah. If let's say there is no further question, then we'll just close the space tonight. Yeah, and the further output would be sent later uh, by your respective uh, MCVP so that it's easier for you to take reference on. Okay, so if no more questions, so I hope that you guys are very clear about how would be the IGV audit process. Yeah, so remember to proceed to the IGV audit. Yeah, we are looking forward to your input as well. Yeah, remember first of, sorry, April. Yeah, first of April, not February. Uh, yeah, first of April. Yep, so uh, thank you for your time tonight. Hey. Sorry? Who has question? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. That's a very dramatic ending. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. Hey, Let's wait. check. Uh... Okay, our special guest. Phone, show up yourself faster. If we cannot hear you if you are speaking. Hello? Okay, yeah, we can, can hear you on... now. Oh, oh my god. Lafau, yes. Please. <laughs> Okay, uh, the question here is that uh, in the LB pricing model slides, uh, it was stated that it was encouraged for IGB to do local volunteer recruitment themselves. So if let's say my LC is planning to do local volunteer recruitment, uh, uh, OGB side is going to do the LB recruitment, is it still okay? Or is there anything that national side will be driving down on this regard? Uh, can you repeat your questions? Okay, so in the LB pricing model slides, it was stated that IGB is encouraged to do their own LB recruitment. Right, so my LC is planning actually planning to let OGB do the uh, LB recruitment. So is it okay to proceed with this? Okay, okay. And is there anything the national side will be doing on okay. this to promote cool. or anything? Cool. Yeah. I understand your question. So nationally, OGV are the key persons in recruiting local volunteers because why? Local volunteers is actually the leads of OGV. Okay, that's clear, right? But what we mean by encourage you to recruit your own local volunteers means we don't we don't. We don't mention that IGV cannot recruit your external local volunteers. You get what I mean? Uh, not really. Can you repeat that again? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I even my B, uh, my BPF, uh, BPPD don't understand me. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Wait. Okay. So basically, of course, local volunteer recruitment has to come from OGV, right? That is nationally standardized. OGV, they will be doing local volunteer recruitment. Okay, but what we mean by we encourage IGV to do your own local volunteer recruitment as well means that other than relying local volunteers from your OGV, IGV you can also, you know, like bring your friends to ask them whether they want to join local volunteers or not. Ah, I see. Okay, Okay, Kofong, you explain once again to us. <laughs> you mean the answer that I get or the question that I ask? The answer, uh, that, the you the answer that you get, of course. Okay, so what I understand here is uh, national side will be doing, uh, national side, OGV will be the one recruiting local volunteer. At the same time, IGV is encouraged to pull together your friends or tap into a network to ask for potential people that can sign up as local volunteer. Am I right? Yeah, but uh, do remember, LV is an OGV strategy. Means recruitment is an OG, OGV strategy. IGV is just only to run project with local volunteer. That is why, like, let's say if you, okay, let's say uh, uh, I put it in a very simple example. I am IGV, okay? I, I think that my I want to encourage my friends to join local volunteer. 
and then OGV has this strategy, this opportunity, right? So I can encourage my friend to join local volunteer through OGV. Ah, uh, okay, understand. Okay, yeah, I hope it's clear now. Means yeah, you can it, you can you. actually encourage your friends or encourage or you know just help your OGV to spread uh posters or things like that to help you in the recruitment process. Hmm. Understand, understand. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, yep. So, any more question? Or anyone speak just now that we couldn't hear them? No, I, no, 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 no. I, I think we would say it is not about whether it is our JD or not, but it's about uh, I mean we I mean for the local volunteer actually you can consider as a LC project as a whole because it will ha are responsible by a lot of you know department yeah so mainly for the attraction strategies or designing the flow it will be responsible for uh, by OGV but then um, as PD as IGV as FL definitely we can also help out on the recruitment as well like widening let's say and also utilizing our personal network or another channel that we can attract on that yeah. Because I think if we separate into like uh, a very clear cut is that uh, this is OGV JD it's nothing about to do about me, but if let's say uh, if OGV may not be able to secure a lot of leads in the sales funnel, then it will be very hard for us to convert them to the local volunteer. Then the whole LC will be suffer as well. Yeah, so I would say uh, more on to a uh, spirit of unity. Yeah. But I think like something to add on is like no matter how right, IGV you need to be in the process of recruitment also. Like it can, even though it's not like a concrete JD that IGV has to do recruitment, but indirectly it will be in your JD. Because for example, OGV are the one recruiting local volunteer for you, right? But you need to be in the process to onboard them, to select, uh, to show them projects and all these things. So indirectly, IGV you will be in the recruitment process. It's just it's just that you are not directly in the process itself or it's not like a specific JD that IGV has to do <laughs> LV checklist uh, what do you mean by LV checklist because like, we don't have EP checklist also <laughs> Hey, you you are asking too much of local volunteer questions. Um, yeah, so for local volunteer, right? Anything regarding recruitment process, um, just go to OGV site because I don't want to channel the wrong message. Okay, just go to OGV site. Uh, have your OGV to engage their respective MCVB to understand how is the recruitment process. Yeah, the uh, OGV will downscale to their network very very soon. So if you EP got sixteen ten, um, dear Miss Cheryl, I think I uh, I got mentioned that just now. LV has a standard, and we will not downscale so soon. But LV has our own LV standards later on, and it is in progress. You're welcome. So if you all don't have any more questions regarding project or this specifically, and if you are only having local volunteer questions, uh, just be patient a little bit more because even though uh, LV attractions will not start that fast okay so don't go too much on LV first just think more about how you should actually work on your project audit first and then LV related questions you can save it for slightly later to address to OGV side or let's wait until OGV has everything finalized then we will address it again uh, all at once okay yeah uh, which you have what um, yeah, so I have a question uh, regarding NAF allocation. So, since now OGV is uh, shifting, shifting their focus to LV, so does that mean we are also uh, charging the allocation, the NAF allocation for OGV into our IGV project? Because since their revenue for their revenue will be going to LV, and then, yeah, do, do you get what I mean? Like, yeah. So you mean the full... Uh full percentage of NF will be covered directly by IG project, is it? 
yeah, because I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, no, I mean, uh, because uh, we have three products in TU, so mm-hmm. we split to three, but like, um, so that means that like, for example, IGV allocated 40% and then for OGV allocated, um, for example, like 20%. So does that mean that now I need to allocate 60% of, N- of NAF into IGV projects if LV, if we are running like this, um, LV incorporated into this GV uh, EP? Yeah, okay. Cool. I think for summer, yes, you you uh you should rearrange your percentage. But instead of like how much percentage you wanted to allocate into that, is also looking into like how much uh your PDIG able to actually get the sales one. For example, if I say uh I only run two products and then hundred percent it will go into IGV. Let's say right. So but if I say I throw the whole hundred percent into IG, but yet I only have like let's say I only have two project, but then uh the amount is too high for the PDIG to actually uh get this amount of sales one yeah so i think just make uh you can increase it but just make sure your pdig able to actually uh get this amount of sales one because if let's say they don't get it eventually it will still go with your lc reserve and at this moment of time we are not thinking yes you can still get a certain amount of our nf covered by your pdig but it's really hard for you to cover fully of your nf coming from uh pdig side so in terms of the range, it really depends on each of your project and also your PDIG capability in getting the sales one. Yeah. So I didn't uh we didn't set anything specifically because we know that for sure in this uh in this few months, particularly for summer peak, it's impossible for all the LC to able to cover fully their NF just by IG project. Yeah, is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Thank you. Alright, thanks, Rachel. Questions. Uh, okay. So actually, um, can I know is there any like a uh, second summer replanning audit for, yeah, for this one because like for right now like uh, I think for NCR, um, what I understand from the OP is they actually can't make the decision like that fast. Yeah, like uh, to actually confirm that whether they need a uh, LV or not this kind of thing. So will there be like any like a uh, maybe second audit or this the only chance for us to. Like plan for the summary planning. Um. Okay. Uh. First questions. Uh. Before we proceed, I just want to understand what are the things that is stopping your OP in making decisions, and how is it going to affect you if you don't have a replanning done now? Hmm. I think for the second question just now is like uh the one that you asked like what is the things that is stopping me is because like for right now um. Because I can't get the confirmation from the OP side whether they actually need the OP, LV or not. And then like what I'm planning to do for the June, the July batch is only solely for LV. And then if, if, I mean like if I actually, uh, so like there's two things that like if I'm going to plan for the LV recruitment, then that means that I will need to actually plan out for the things for the uh, whole four weeks LV recruitment. And then if uh, they actually don't want, like uh, not going to have any LV, then uh, means that I will just straight away cancel for the whole uh, July batch. Okay, the then uh, my follow-up question is that, does your OP uh, got mentioned that they don't want any EPs for July realization? For July realization, uh, the reason we actually can't do the EP is because like uh, the timeline will be clashing with the next batch. So that's why uh, I'm planning to actually make it into four weeks LV only. But then for the LV part, when I actually ask uh, the OP, they like um they actually can't make the decision yet due to the um like maybe their own timeline is also like not being confirmed and also they are they are concerning that the COVID issue is also like not being like stable yet they actually can't make the decision yet this kind of thing um yeah so in this situation let's say if you already know your project is gonna clash right and then at the same time your your OP doesn't say they don't want to run EP uh. Is it possible for you to just delay that realization to slightly later time, so you don't need to rush for a, a answer or rush for a planning now? Because the key the key reasons of why we implement LV is because, for example, you know for sure you don't have EP. That is one thing. Second thing is your OG, OP doesn't want any EPs. Then only we look into running LV. But let's say if you don't have that issues, then I think it will be best for you to just delay your realization timeline rather than rushing a realization with local volunteers, which uh, maybe your OP doesn't need it. You get what I mean? Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But the one you can bring it offline to me again. I will. I will have more discussion with you on that. All right. Okay.
any more questions? So uh, the add up the add on question on my question would be so for the LV revenue it will be under IGV instead of OGV, right? Uh sorry again. The LV um, so the LV revenue means um the L E L V fee uh, -huh. uh will be count will be counted under IGV revenue instead of OGV revenue, right? Yes, because they are going for uh IGV uh realization, so it's counted for um as IGV revenue. But then for LV, one thing to change is that this time uh, we will get the money by approval instead of by realization because we need that cash uh, come in first. Yeah. But in terms of what you consider IG OG, is actually considered IG because for OG side, it's actually just uh, general as their lead. Is that if I say after they become a local volunteer in the future, they want to go for OG um, to be uh, uh, OG EP, then that is the part that under OG uh, revenue. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, so, uh, mm -hmm. so that means that the performance, I would say the, the so-called approval goal will be under OGV, but the, but the revenue will be counted as IGV revenue. Approval goal counted as OGV revenue? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, OGV performance, as in their current KPI and stuff. Is that? Uh, yes. So it really depends on what is your OG set. If I say your OG is uh their main uh focus is also because what I know is that for OG set they their main focus uh that means that they are not only doing L uh LV but for sure LV is one of the uh their KPI as well. Okay, understand. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any question? Uh, I have a question. Yes. So uh, regarding the uh, like let's say I have two currently I have two OP, they are interested in joining uh. Um, partner with us and right now we are they haven't respond to whether to take in local volunteer and then the project audit is submit is going to submit in first of april does the mou have to put inside the dmf or we can wait it on it later only at inside you mean this one is newly raised right it's not about you sign and then you change the terms right yeah this is a newly signed one it will not be required to put any MOU under DMF. Okay. Yep. Yeah, for the audit, no. Yes. Okay, thank you. They need to update the leads, you know? yeah. not just audit the progression. Yeah. So, because this one, uh, for the audit is for winter opening. Yep. So, yeah, and also summer planning. So that's why um, it wouldn't require you for the OP um, to update certain document, which is the supporting document like you mentioned just now in this phrase. Yeah, but maybe for the winter preparation, it will be required so that we can finalize all the uh, condition of the project. Okay, thank yeah. you. And summer preparation as well. Okay, last two minutes, yeah, for the question, so grab your last chance. Uh, you mean EP agreement, is it? Uh, for the EP agreement, uh, it's different. Uh, we will downscale a new one. And at this moment for the LV, we are still in drafting. Uh, basically, right now, we are collecting the, um, we are getting the uh, IGV and also OG uh, MOU, and then we are drafting a new uh, MOU for LV side. Yeah. So afterward, we will uh, downscale it, but not so soon. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, I think one or two more last question within these two minutes. Yeah. Uh, I have another question, uh, actually, uh, to follow up on Wei Chao's question on NAS. Uh, so does the budget, does the budget uh, tap in the DMF, right? Uh, we have to plan the budget and then one of the expense uh, is uh, on NAF. Mm -hmm. So if let's say, for example, 
um, my LC is running is trying to run only two projects in 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 summer, yeah. one local volunteer, one, one global volunteer. Then uh, do I have to um, split the IGV supposed NAF into these two projects only, or or do I just fill in, fill in at all, or I I don't just fill. Should I just fill in, or I don't just fill? I, I just don't fill in at all. What do you mean? Yeah, like fill in and don't fill in at all. Okay. I mean, I so understand it, the first part. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so is it a must for us to fill in the NAF inside the uh, the budget 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 tab in DMF? Yes. If not, then you were fully paying your NF by or uh, your reserve. So even mm. though we know that it's unable for you to like, let's say your NF, let's say it's one K, right? Even though you get three hundred for your IG side to cover, at least you are saving three hundred already. But if I say you take out the whole thing, that means that you were fully paying the 1000 by your own reserve. Yeah. And then for sure, yeah. At this meaning, current moment, mm, yeah, sorry. Yes. So meaning to say um, the budget would most likely be uh, not achieving 5% profitability. So is that, that is okay? Uh, at this moment, we do not push it that hard, but I think in the criteria, at least in your planning, we'll still put for 5%, because for 5%, to be honest, uh, at this current moment situation, if I say you are not even planned it, uh, in 5% profitability, it's very hard for you to actually achieve that. And usually it will go into deficit. 5% is a very uh, average minimum. Yeah. So at I least see. with 5%, you will have a certain profit. And like I think at the beginning, when Travis said about it, is that in this crucial situation, you definitely you need a profit to uh, ongoing your, uh, your your IG project and also your whole LC sustainability. Mm, I understand. Yeah, so we will still keep the 5% in the, uh, as, a, as, a, as one of the criteria in that. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Yeah, and okay. really for FL side, it really have to have a lot of synergy with PDIG side. If uh, you set the target as 10k and you know definitely they cannot make it, for sure you need to rearrange, you need to uh, have the whole synergy to adjust the whole budget again. Yeah, so same thing for IG as well. If I say, is your PD IG unable to cover this? Maybe you have to rethink about the whole activity. Are you able to cover or you should cut those activities already? Okay, yeah. Okay, understand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so any more question? If no, right, because I think um, we are running a bit out of time. Yep. So um, if you have further questions, do let us know uh, and also ask your respective MCVP on that so that we understand what are the concerns that you're having right now and we can clarify to ensure everyone is on the same page. Yep. So I think it will be the end of today's IGV consultancy space. And thank you everyone for your effort and also time uh, for attending the space. Yeah. And hope you um, understand clearly the picture of IGV audit so far and also bring along the information to your EB, to your team that who didn't attend the meeting so that you can also share the information with them uh, and also make sure everything is going right. Okay. Yeah. So it will be the end of the time. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye Joanna. Peace. Have a good night. Make sure you stay stay healthy, drink more water, wash your hands, stay in home. Do talk the room, okay? <laughs> What's the long one? Bye. 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 Submit audio on time. Submit audio on time, okay? Uh, wait, Chow, doing exercise, I think you can talk with Eng about that. Thank you. <laughs> you step on my... Amanda, do plan okay? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe we can try five minutes challenge. <laughs> You do five minutes, I do one minute, okay? Lamao. Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, if you, you are clear, you, you, we shouldn't be expecting any more questions regarding audit, okay? Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.